And you're all very welcome today. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Catherine Mean and I'm chair of the Germany group. So uh, it's nice to be able to introduce <coughs> a topic that goes way beyond some of the topics we talk about, which are just Germany. Uh, so we're very grateful today that Dr. Scholz is with us. Dr. Emma Scholz is the acting director of the German Development Institute and she's been deputy director since 2009. Before that, she headed the Institute's Research Department on Environmental Policy and Natural Resource Man uh, Management. She's also a member of the German Council for Sustainable Development. Her publications cover various topics, at the which is, as we've learned, her big interest, the intersection of environment and development, and also on adaptation to climate change and sustainable forest use. So she'll speak for 20 25 minutes, and then we'll open the floor to questions. If you could make sure your phones are off, please, before we start. Thanks. Okay. Um, so let me first thank you for inviting me. I, I was a bit surprised uh, in, uh, that you really wanted to hear me talking about uh, the German approach to sustainable development, um, uh, because it's not what you usually associate with an institute which focuses on external um, affairs. Uh, but maybe this is a change now in the last uh, few years, and that's part of the three things I would like to talk about. The first um, thing I want to explain is that Germany has a very comprehensive approach to sustainable development as expressed in its uh, sustainable development strategy, but it lacks um, uh, unity in purpose and uh, in ambition across uh, policy fields. So you have a ambitious concept and, you, and weakness um, in implementation. Uh, <clears throat> and the second thing, thing is, how can this contra um, contradictory uh, situation exist? How, how does it uh, come about? And the one way to explain it is that um, there are many supporters of uh, sustainability in political parties, in various sectors of society, and in a way this support has grown. But at the same time, uh, Germany is in a situation where trans uh, changes towards more sustainability require transformative steps. So more radical change than just uh, implementing uh, um, environmental policies. And this uh, tension uh, is um, expressed in in this uh, contradiction between having an ambitious conceptual approach to sustainable development and weak implementation. And the third point I would like to address is what, what is the relevance of sustainable development uh, and the German approach in it for its approach to European matters and also in its uh, foreign policy. So the first thing, when you want to understand the German approach, you can look in the internet, you can Google uh, German sustainable development uh, strategy, and you will find a summary. So this is the summary of it. And um, you will see, ah, all the SDGs are on top, and when you look where, which goals we have set ourselves and the indicators, you will see we follow the structure of the SDGs. Um, and you will see in the introductory text that um, all insights into planetary boundaries, into the need for deep changes in production and consumption structures um, are there, that um, development cannot uh, follow business as usual approaches, you find all that um, there. But when you then look at the specific goals which um, the German government has set itself and the indicators against which it wants to measure progress, you see that um, the different um, policy fields, so the different ministries, have participated in a very uneven way in defining um, goals. And for this you have to know that this is a strategy defined by the, and adopted by the executive. So the parliament has not participated uh, in that. And what you will see is that um, goals which focus on the social aspect of sustainable development, so reducing negative distributional <coughs> effects in Germany are weak, so reducing poverty, for example, does not refer to being more ambitious in reducing poverty. Um, I mean, if you take Berlin, 18% of the Berlin um, population live on social transfer. Yeah. 
18% is quite a lot. Um, and we know that uh, um, children of single mothers are, have the highest risk of living in poverty. Mm -hmm. What poverty means in Germany, obviously. Um, but the, the aim there is to, is, uh, to, make, to um, achieve or to maintain the situation that poverty rates in Germany are below European average. I don't think that is ambitious. Um, then gender, for example. Um, the objective is to um, have 30% female CEOs um, by 2030, I think. We already have 30.9%. I wouldn't define that indicator as being very uh, ambitious. But when you then, um, the real difficulty we have in Germany is when we look at environmental indicators. We you know that we are not missing our um, uh, CO2 reduction uh, targets. We, we have increased the share of renewable energies in, ele in electricity provision, um, but we are, um, the share is not growing uh, quickly uh, enough. Um, we are not good <coughs> at reducing biodiversity loss. Um, we have difficulty in we have too much nitrate in our groundwater. Uh, the EU has already um, um, criticized us heavily for, for that, and we know it for years, and we are not able to, to change the, the production patterns which lead to those uh, uh, problems. And when you look at, um, at climate, at, at emissions, you see also that the Ministry of Transport, for example, is absent from the agenda. And we know that transport is, um, mm -hmm. is creating yes. a third of, of CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. So you see that the level of ambition is just like, like a bottom-up approach within the executive. Those ministries who, uh, like environment, development, some uh, also social affairs, are more engaged, and those who do not engage themselves are not forced to engage, to get engaged. And that um, has also, that's my last sentence on that part, to do with the fact that maybe, you, I don't know, you, many here um, are focusing on Germany, whether you heard about the autonomy of ministries. Um, mm -hmm. In German, ressort autonomie is a very important feature of our um, public administration in Germany, that um, the, the coordinating power of our chancellor are not to be compared with the power a prime minister has, for example, in the UK. Uh, the autonomy of the ministry to define its policies is um, uh, sacrosanct in a way, and this is because the Prussian system, to which all this goes back, uh, said uh, ministries um, are run by experts, and the logic they know the logic of their field best, and that's why they need to have autonomy for making rational and effective policies. But today, what um, the problems we are facing are integrated uh, problems, what we call wicked problems. They are not, most of the problems do not have only, cannot be solved only by the finance ministry or the economic ministry or the environment ministry. They are, um, they, this, these problems are caused often by uh, actions in another policy area and therefore in, require integrated approaches. And that's what the 2030 agenda is all about. The SDGs are defined as a network of targets. And um, this is not uh, um, sufficiently reflected by the German Sustainable Development Strategy. And that was also the result of the peer review, um, which was uh, done by international, um, a group of international experts headed by Helen Clark. So uh, what I said now, I now focus just on the executive. So if the executive is so um, non-united about this, why did they adopt such a comprehensive approach? And at least when you least read the introduction to the strategy, you think oh, everything's fine, the Germans will do it. And that has to do with the fact that in the public um, there is considerable approach, uh, support for this comprehensive and ambitious um, approach. And um, because the, uh, the German negotiation leaders in the process in, in um, um, New York City under the UN was led by um, the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Development. So two actors which have a strong interest in ambitious policies. And the rest said, okay, they, they do it. Let's, they, they cared at a very late stage what it actually meant. 
And they did not need to care very early in the process because they could use their autonomy for just keeping the level of ambition for their areas of interest low. But in, this, in the society as such, we have many civil society organizations in development and in environment which push very strongly for the agenda. We have newcomers in the field. Um, the, social, um, the social welfare organizations in Germany, this is also an area where non-state actors are very strong. <coughs> um, they realized that the 2030 agenda could be an important lo lobbying framework for them as well, because it's a universal agenda, because it's not about developing countries, it's about change in uh, everywhere. Uh, so the social basis which pushes, understands the agenda and pushes for it has been broadened. Uh, when I entered the Sustainable Development Council in Germany in 2009, it was clearly in the hands of the environmentalists. Yeah? And sustainability was identified with environmental concerns, not with social concerns. And it was definitely, um, if international, then more with poor countries. And this has changed um, as well. And I think that was quite an investment um, which was necessary for that. And it's not like that in other countries, like in France, the environmental um, NGOs, they don't agree with the agenda. They don't think the agenda is a flag which makes sense to hold. Um, so you will find, maybe you invite someone from France uh, <laughs> <laughs> to talk about that. Um, but uh, you also see some changes because um, uh, in the private sector there is, uh, we have like a split of enterprises which very much um, have based their business case on maintaining things as they are. The car industry is one, uh, they, they awoke to electrification very recently now because of the diesel um, scandal. Um, but there are many firms uh, which base their business case on sustainability, on technological innovation, on decarbonization, on rational or efficient uh, uh, resource use, um, but also in the financial sector. Um, the German finance ministry, uh, when we were having the German presidency of the G20, they were still looking at green finance issues with a lot of mistrust, and they were not very comfortable with it. But then we had uh, the process in the EU on sustainable finance going, and now the German finance ministry has decided to adopt, to develop a German strategy for sustainable finance, which um, I think is, can be a real lever for mainstreaming sustainability issues across the economy <coughs> in many, many sectors. So I think that is um, very important, but it doesn't mean that the Ministry of Finance now um, says that we lift the flag of the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs. So that is an important question. Do we make um, progress in transformation towards sustainability because we lift the SDGs flag <coughs> up? Or um, it, are the SDGs helpful for pushing such proce processes? Um, so should we invest a lot in that? Uh, or is it more important to, to focus on specific problems and um, be aware that um, problem solving has to um, uh, consider the various facets of sustainability, the social, economic, environmental one, and go towards integrated approaches. So um, that's, I think, something we, we, we could um, discuss because what you always find in in um, public administration, but also in, in CSOs, because everybody has to market what he or she is doing, is to go for an identity. So is, do we get best results if we say, we concentrate our efforts on the 2030 agenda, or do we get best results when we focus on the problems as such, identify them, and um, Keep, the, make the, keep it for the experts to focus on the actual relations to the 2030 agenda. This um, is something I would like to hear your point of view too. And the third part, how, what effect does the 2030 agenda or importance have for um, the German-European policy and foreign policy? Um, when we had the G20 presidency in 2017, uh, the Germans decided to put the 2030 agenda and the SDGs as overarching goal system on top of their, their president, presidency. 
Um, they weren't so successful at that time to really convince the finance ministry about it, but in the long term, the finance ministry is now changing, as I have just explained. Mm -hmm. um, and they used it also for campaigning for their seat in the um, United Nations Security Council, because they knew or they guessed um, that developing countries would um, be sympathetic to a country which said we will put uh, the SDGs and the Agenda 2030 at the, um, at the top of our, our agenda. Um, it is also, I think, a helpful framework when you want to um, combat the roots of the crisis of multilateralism we are going through now. Um, Disunited, fragmented societies um, certainly are um, at the core of, of um, populist and nationalist, my country first, uh, um, political forces, because it's when, when a sizable share of the population feels forgotten or fears to lose status. That's, we were talking about Germany. In Germany, this is the mixture which makes up the voters of, of the AFD. Um, then it's easy for um, extremist, I will call it extremist, uh, political forces to, to uh, mobilize them for my country first policies against multilateral and international uh, cooperation. And I think the 2030 agenda goes against all that. So you could in a way say that tw the 2030 agenda is, is a transformative agenda while um, my country first movements are like a counter transformation um, uh, movement. Um, so, the, um, the 2030 Agenda offers a framework and a vision to orient international um, foreign policy, to orient also to guide European uh, policy, but um, as I said in Germany, it is still identified with belonging to development policy and belonging to environmental policy, and that makes it difficult for the agenda to, de to develop its full potential, so to say, also in, in, in the international relations um, uh, of Germany. Um, recently, I, I participated in a consultation on the reflection paper of the EU, and uh, what I realized was that um, people in Germany from the government feel very disappointed by the scenarios proposed, the three scenarios of the EU reflection paper for how the EU could implement the 2030 agenda. Um, so I fear that there won't be much positive energy for pushing that um, process forward. So I would be very happy if the Irish government did that. <laughs> And the last point also for discussion, what I, what I would find interesting to hear about you, how do you rate the transformative strength of sustainable development policies versus climate policies? If you look at Fridays for Future, I don't know how strong they are here in Ireland. In Germany, the Fridays for Future are developing in immense political impact. It's been like 300,000 kids on the streets last Friday, and um, I think that um, this relates to the other question I was making before, but um, I wouldn't say that because it's, they are pressing for climate policy, it's not the same, it's, it's a big part of what I would describe as sustainable, uh, sustainability uh, policy, but it may be interesting to compare these two fields and see how a sustainability-informed climate policy would have to look like mm -hmm. for achieving most of convergence between these two areas and concepts for the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>